Hello everyone, my name is Wajid. I have cleared USML Step 1 exam and since then I have uh, tutoring for many USML students on 9 year world and first date. So I have uh, created this uh, MCQ series from your world of endocrinology. I will explain to you block by block MCQs of your world of every system. Okay, so if you think that uh, 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 that I am lazy right and you uh, you will take from me a lot of time so yes uh, you world is very boring so you're in the right place I will explain uh, all these MCQs in very concise and effective way it will not take a time off from you okay and we also help you uh, in solving your uh, question I will uh, explain the tricks of MCQs how you will approach the MCQs and how you will solve okay you can pause the mcqs for the uh, correct answer and write the answer in your own page then i will explain to you why this question has the that answer right and why the other uh, option was wrong so every question will have correct answer uh, explanation and also i will explain the wrong answer okay and i also will also tell you the differential diagnosis and also i will tell you the management okay so this will uh, not only help you when you are uh, preparing for usml step one this will also help you in your professional exam also so the first question is this one there is a 27 year old man come to the office due to a current episode of muscle weakness right there is something of uh, muscle weakness in this patient so the first thing which i notice in this uh, question is muscle weakness this is my approach he has no other significant past medical history the patient weight has been stable for the past few years and his current BMI is 23. His blood pressure is 190, supine and 195 when he's standing. His heart rate is 70, which looks stable, right? The rest of the physical examination is also unremarkable. And thing which uh, led to my correct uh, diagnosis is this one, this laboratory uh, evaluation, right? This laboratory evaluation show a very low plasma renin concentration, right? The plasma renin activity is very, very low in this case so what is think about it what is the case in which there is hypertension also and the plasma renin level is also low so in my case i will diagnose this patient as secondary hypertension right in my case this is secondary hypertension this is secondary hypertension and what was the secondary cause the secondary cause was uh, you know the secondary cause was too much of aldosterone in their system right that lead to their too much of sodium retention too much of water retention right so you know this is due to increase aldosterone increase aldosterone so why the aldosterone is and why it is increase aldosterone because you know that renin and aldosterone has the inverse uh, relation whenever when our aldosterone activity is increased, renin activity is, de is decreased. So, so this, this is how I think that in this case, renin activity is decreased. So it must be that aldosterone activity in this case will be increased. And now think about it, why the aldosterone level is increased. It may either from, uh, you know, from bilateral adrenal hyperplasia, right? Or maybe from, uh, you know, from uh, adenoma of the uh, zona glomerulosa, right? Like cone syndrome, right? in which too much of aldosterone is produced in the in the kidney right in the adrenal cortex so in this case there is two possible causes of this uh, it may be from it may be from uh, bilateral nodular hyperplasia it may be from bilateral nodular hyperplasia of the adrenal cortex of the adrenal cortex or Secondary cause of the increased aldosterone may be from Cone syndrome. Okay, Cone syndrome is the condition in which there is increased aldosterone. So why this patient is hypertensive? Okay, why this patient has muscle weakness? Because you know that when there is increased aldosterone as a result of Cone syndrome or as a result of secondary uh, hyperplasia, right? There will be increase aldosterone and there will be increase uh, increase uh, absorption of sodium uh, increase absorption of water right that lead to too much of uh, blood volume retention that lead to that hypertension so from where this aldosterone is uh, uh, secreted okay in a molecular level it is secreted from the zona glomerulosa of the adrenal right there is three uh, layer of this uh, adrenal cortex one is uh, zona glomerulosa and 
second is fasciculata and the sec uh, third one is reticularis. From the zona glomerulosa, uh, you know aldosterone is produced. From fasciculata, cortisol is produced and from reticularis, and androgen is uh, produced, right? So this patient has hypertension, right? It must be from this uh, uh, too much of aldosterone that lead to the decreased renin secretion. Uh, why this patient is not edematous? Okay, so I will explain now the pathogenesis of primary hyperaldosteronism and aldosterone escape mechanism. Okay, so primary hyperaldosteronism may be from bilateral nodular hyperplasia or may be from adrenal adenoma like Cohn syndrome. That will lead to that too much of aldosterone in their system. Okay, and that too much of aldosterone lead to what? That too much of aldosterone lead to decreased potassium reabsorption in the collecting duct. And if you know that, if you have uh, noticed this MCQs, right, this patient also has weakness. So this weakness must be from this hypokalemia due to uh, not enough uh, potassium reabsorption, right? It, this muscle weakness may from hypokalemia, okay? This patient does not, you know, they, they does not uh, uh, reabsorb the proton, right? Okay? And when a hydrogen atom is not reabsorbed, right, what happened that this lead to metabolic alkalosis. So in primary hyperaldosteronism, from the biochemistry perspective, okay, metabolic alkalosis will be happening, okay. And you know that from that increased sodium reabsorption lead to that hypertension in this patient and increased blood volume. That lead to decreased renin, which, which is explained by this uh, patient that this laboratory elevation have decreased renin. Why Why the renin was decreased? It is due to that too much of aldosterone, okay? And if there is hypertension and increased blood volume in the system, okay, that uh, blood will eventually uh, go towards the kidney, right? That will increase the renal blood flow and will increase the GFR, that will increase the atrial natriuretic peptide. This will lead to that sodium excretion, okay? That's why this patient does not get this uh, edema okay this condition is called aldosterone escape mechanism okay this system is escaped from the aldosterone from the effect of aldosterone because of this pressure natriuresis okay so this you know that why option a and option b is wrong it is because that option a and option b has the association of few chromocytoma okay this patient does not have few chromocytoma because this patient does not have uh, episodic hypertension this patient does not have palpitation this patient does not have, uh, you know, this patient has not have sweating, right? So, okay, so why the option C is wrong? It's because their juxtaglomerular cell of the kidney actually produce renin. So, in this case, there will be uh, increased renin in the body. So, in our question, the renin level is uh, depressed. So it must not be this case, right? Zona fasciculate of the adrenal and zona reticulatus of the adrenal. You know that zona fasciculate of the adrenal produce cortisol, right? And in cortisol, if there is too much of cortisol, it will lead to Cushing syndrome, okay? You will see central obesity, you will see hyperglycemia also. And it must not be zona reticularis because you know that uh, is if there is uh, zona reticularis involved, right? There will be too much androgen in this patient, right? So guys, this was all about this question. Uh, if you think that I uh, upload other question like that, please tell me in the comment section. I will upload uh, a question on regular basis like this. So thanks for watching my video.